Why are you here in Hawaii visiting St. Francis School? Well, I am a sister of St. Francis and I heard so much wonderful things about this school since I ventured about 10 years ago. And I get calendars of all the fun and students that are going in. So I thought, wow, if I'm coming to Hawaii, I have to come visit. The other reason is I'm the vocation director for the Sisters of St. Francis, so I'm here also to get to know students and to work with young adults to kind of see where God's calling them and help them discern where, where their path in life. So what is the year of consecrated life about? Well, Pope Francis named this year the year for consecrated life, and consecrated life is any life that in which you have vows under, like married life or some People who are single take a, uh, a vow of consecrated life uh, to be single and also religious life where you live in a community. And um, Pope Francis is not only a priest who took vows but also is in a religious community, the Jesuits. This year he really wants to concentrate on the consecrated life as religious life. So how do the Sisters of St. Francis live it out? For me, I love being a Sister of St. Francis because one, it helps me be supported by all these wonderful other sisters and to live a life where I can um, be surrounded by sisters with the same purpose. For example, we have morning prayer every day and we have evening prayer every day. And so it's an atmosphere where it's prayer-centered, God-centered. So it keeps me focused on what my purpose in life is. I did not want to be a sister because my portrayal of sisters was like sister acts. They were naive, they were kind of uh, dependent, they were, um, there was no joy, and they had to do everything they were told, like scrubbing the floor with a toothbrush. But when I started looking into religious life, I realized it's so much more than that, that the sisters are CEOs of hospitals and principals of schools and all uh, the freedom you have after entering religious life is just amazing. So either through education, like the, this wonderful school, or to be pastoral care people to, for those who are sick um, and just need someone to talk to for counseling or whatever, to minister to the homeless. We have sisters who work at homeless shelters, food pantries, things like that. So we have a lot of people, a lot of sisters just doing wonderful ministries throughout the world. What did you do about it once you realized you were called to be a sister? It's a really funny story. <laughs> so before, I worked for the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service restoring wetlands. My niece was born and I became the godmother. I was away from the church. I was not going to church anymore. In fact, I would stay overnight in my friend Lori's house so I wouldn't have to go to church with my family. <laughs> so um, I thought, well, if I'm godmother, I better start acting like so I started going back to church and it sparked this joy in me. So I thought, well, maybe I'll be more active in church. So I became the coordinator of the Renew program for our parish. And I see small Christian communities getting together. Sister Louise Elf ran the Renew program, was helped come to parishes and teach them how to run the program. So she came and she stayed overnight at my house one time and she said, hey, have you ever thought about being a sister? I said, no, I do not want to be a sister. I do not want to be like the Sister Act sisters that were portrayed in that movie and the media <laughs> portrayal of sisters. And so she sent me information on it. I threw it out, didn't even read it. But then I started having this feeling bubbling up inside of me. There's got to be something more that God's calling me to other than restoring wetlands, which is a great thing to do for God's creation. But I felt called to something more. So I had an opportunity to go on a Youth 2000 and Beyond retreat as a chaperone. And at the end of this retreat, they asked if any sister ever thought that they, any person thought they had a uh, vocation to please stand. I knew God wanted me to stand up. I just felt this, just stand up, just look into it. Well, what happened is I started bawling. So I'm like, I don't want to, I don't want to. But then I, I stood up and I just felt like all will be okay that this is, this is something I need to look into and it will be a very um, life-giving life. 